Hi there and welcome to today's Photoshop tutorial on Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers. Today we're going to be looking at doing a response to an artist using Photoshop and the artist we're going to be looking at is this one, Michaela Latanzio and she does these amazing portraits where she cuts out in real life pieces of the picture and pins them with a little pin onto a background of grey to create these sort of fragmented portraits. They're really interesting, really exciting. And um, we're gonna try and do it in Photoshop digitally using a portrait photograph and the shape select tool. And we're trying to do it in a straightforward, easy to understand way, okay? So if you wanna know more about this artist, search her up on the internet and have a look at some of her work. So this is the response I made earlier to show you what we're gonna be doing. You can see there are a layer here with some drop shadows and these rectangular shapes. Um, a layer here with like a main torso and it's all been taken out of a background photo. So in order to do this, this is what we're going to try and do. Okay, so we're going to open the photograph of the face, which we've got here. We can crop the image down because we don't need the whole picture, so we'll crop it down. So we've just got the bit we want to work with, like so. Using the crop tool, <clears throat> once we've got that, we need to select just the face to work with. So the best way of doing that, we can use the select tool and the subject select. And this way, Photoshop will decide what it thinks the subject is. It will make that decision for us and cut out the object. Once we've done this, if we go to the move tool and we then can make it onto a new layer by going edit, copy, edit, paste. We've got that cut out onto its own layer. We will need to create a new layer in between them so that we can have a blank background. So we'll click the plus button down here, which creates a new layer. We'll drag it below it. We'll come over here to our color selection. We will click on the square to choose the color that we need. In this case, I want the sort of mid to light gray, so we'll move it over here, click OK. We'll look for the paint bucket. It sometimes is hiding behind the gradient tool, in which case we'll hold it, the mouse down until we find the paint bucket. We'll go over to the layer that says layer two, we'll click on it, and we've now got a gray background. And that's the first step of our response, and you can see here. To make the picture fit the page better, we can go up to view and go to fit on screen and it will zoom it in so I hope we've got about the right same size as the other one which makes it quite easy okay fairly straightforward work so far now the next step is to draw some shapes we are going to use the shape tool which is hiding underneath the rectangle tool so go over to it hold it down find the polygon tool we are looking for a shape that is six sides which is a hexagon which is the shape that the artist used once we've got that we are then going to start to draw a bunch of small hexagons. At the moment, you can see they are coming out gray. If I want to make them a different color so I can see them, I'll do them in white. And we are going to place these all over the face in a sort of randomly dispersed pattern. And we're going to do a whole variety of different sizes, different angles, so that we get a really good fragmented effect when we come to cut these out. And you can see all I'm doing is clicking and dragging, creating the shapes, making sure I fill in the little gaps with smaller ones, maybe doing some bigger ones, making sure I've got all the different facial features covered. Anything where there isn't a shape will be cut out and we won't see it again. So plan where you're going to put the shapes so that you cover the right bits with the right size shapes. You can do this on multiple layers. You can see every time I make a polygon shape, it's making a new layer over here. I'll talk you through what we're going to do with that in a little while. So we'll make a few more of these here. Some larger ones on the forehead. So we've got a whole variety of overlapping different shapes. Filling the whole section of where the head is. I'll do a few more up here. A few more there. You can have a lot of fun with this, putting different shapes. You don't have to necessarily 
If you can do your own versions, you could use different shapes, different sizes. And we'll do a few more over here. And we will be almost done. So keep doing some more shapes. Different sizes, different areas. A few more here. A few more there. shapes down here and then one more last one in there okay so I'm actually one more I'm happy with my shapes now this is what I need to do I need to go to my layers and you can see I've got 65 different polygon layers now that's gonna be confusing for what we're gonna do later on so if I scroll all the way to the bottom and I hide everything but the polygons then when I go to layer I can go down to where it says merge visible and that will put them all onto one layer on their own. You can see that really clearly here. Now what I want to do is cut those out of this layer which has got the face on it. So to do that I will use the magic wand. I will click anywhere on the screen that isn't a rectangle and you can see that it's now got this flashing line. I will go to where it says select and inverse and I'll just have flashing lines where the hexagon shapes are. I will then hide the eye next to where it says polygons over here. Click on the layer with the face, highlight it with the eye so it's now visible. I will go edit, copy, edit, paste. And you will see that I now have the selections cut out, which is what I was after in the first place. Now, to make it even more effective, I will need to do another piece of cutting out as well. So I'll go back to the original portrait. This time I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool. I'm going to draw by clicking a shape around the face and the shoulders and the neckline so that I have got this part of the torso to add to the image. So I go back to the layer where the picture is. I go edit, copy, edit, paste. And then when I close the eye on this, you'll see I've got that part and this part. And there are my two sections of my cutout face. Now to make them look more effective and more like they are pinned into a canvas, I'm going to click on them over here where the layer is, right click, right, and then right click where the picture is, right, and then right click, I'm going to, right, right click and go up to where it says blending options, then I'm going to come down to where it says drop shadow, and I'm going to add a drop shadow in on my image. And I will need to make sure that I have got it set up right. So I want it on normal. It will be about 60% opacity. And a similar amount on that. And click OK. Actually, I will do that again. And I'll put the opacity to 100%. I'll try that. That looks better. And I'll do the same thing on this one. So I go to blending options. And I'll click OK. Blending options. Tick drop shadow. Make sure I've got my angle in the correct place. And click OK, and I should have my drop shadow on that as well. So there you are, there's the drop shadows. This is now my image in the style of the artist. I'll go File, Save As, Save on my computer, give it a name, stick it in a folder, and click Save. And there it is. Now, you can see the two different versions, one was with slightly less, slightly more. The great thing about doing responses to artists, if you're doing 
an interest in this and if you're doing a qualification is you try out different versions you can put them both on your coursework and um, compare see which one you prefer okay hopefully you've enjoyed watching this tutorial and if you have obviously pop over to Quentin Carp the nature of flowers and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this okay thank you very much for watching and um, I will just say goodbye okay thank you very much and goodbye